the Celtics got freaking booed off the TD Garden floor after a devastating Game 5 loss to Philly. We're going to solve all the Celtics' problems next on First to the Floor. Philly's going to be first to the floor here, and it is Martin Smart as he usually is. Welcome in to another episode of First of the Floor. Ben Vallis here. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. We've got Jake Eisenberg and Jackson Bowie here. Jackson, how you doing, sir? Welcome back to the show. Oh, I've been better, Ben. I've been better. And I bet you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I'm all right. I'm ready to. I'm ready for a therapy session, if that's what yeah. we're calling this this recording today. <laughs> it's all part of the intro formula. Ask everyone mm. how they're doing. And so, Jake, <laughs> how you doing, man? You all right? <laughs> yeah, doing okay, man. Um, yeah, dark, dark mm. times. Considering where we've been at times over the past six months, this is pretty. Pretty not good as far as times go. Yeah, pretty not good, I think is, yeah, it's the it's the main takeaway. Everyone, all the pundits are leading with that, pretty not good. Um, Jackson, just, uh, what's your main takeaway from this one? Like, why did, this <laughs> happen? Why did we lose this game? What happened? Um, all right, so I think we can get into the minutia, and we will, because we're a Celtics podcast, and it's what we do. It's what we love to do. Um <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to start with a po- with the feeling I had at, at the end of the game and probably work backwards. I think losses like this, they seem to either correctly or incorrectly confirm all of the skepticism and all of the worries that you had about this team, probably going back to like what, maybe December. That's when it started to go a little bit sour. Um, so your doubts about Joe Missoula are forefront your doubts about the mentality of Tatum and Brown as a duo and how much mental resilience they have. They are called into question the legitimacy of the supporting cast, et cetera. You could go on and on and on. I think the reason we lost this game is, and this is a really stupid analysis. I just think the shots weren't falling. I really do. I mean, you can go on about, you can go on, go on about defense all you want. And obviously the lack of a plan B when the shot doesn't fall. Now there's a topic that we've unpicked before and I think we're going to unpick again, but it's just like, if that, if the first few shots don't go in and you know, we get separated by like nine points or so seldom do we bring it back. So I think in all in all, it was a bad day at the office, but this is probably the one time and maybe like, you know, obviously Thursday, Friday, Australian time will be the one time that you can't get it wrong until we can't get it wrong in two more days or three more days after that. But we had a bad day at the office and I think just the playoff setting and I think everything that we've been through the past, you know, three or four months has now just all come to fruition to make it feel much, much worse than it actually is. Um, did I answer your question there sufficiently? I just put it down to a bad shooting day, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. That's all, I, that's I, all I, I've got. I fully agree. Much, much worse than it actually is. It's pretty fucking bad, Jackson. It's yeah, pretty, pretty bad. bad. <laughs> pretty like, bad. We're on the brink of uh, being eliminated in the second round for the first time since, is it like the first time since Kyrie the and the Bucks? Yeah. That's bad. And that Whoa, season yeah. felt very similar to how this season feels. And that, like, it's a good team. It's talented. It's all there. But I eh, don't know. No, it's just this team, quite... This team is yeah. much better. We won 10 more games than that team. But look, this was just... This was a, this was a disaster across the board. Like, mm. shots weren't falling. I mean, Jackson, you, know, you mentioned the defense. And maybe I was like, yeah, it was a disaster. It I was, didn't mention the defense because there was none to mention. Yeah, How exactly. Yeah. What was the, what's the point of mentioning something that doesn't exist? Defense. Yeah. It was <laughs> so bad from the jump. Mm. So bad. And like one of the best things they've done all series has been shut down Maxi, and they let him get comfortable. And if he's comfortable, then you're in trouble. And he mm-hmm. had, what, 30 points today? 19 he, in the second half. The, yeah, the Embiid hard and pick and roll was the easiest it's looked all series. Bad sign. Should not be the mm. case in game five. It should look quite mm. difficult. At no point did we adjust. We, we just defended it the same way. 
all game have done so mm-hmm. for the past two games, three games. Quick, try something else, maybe. So, nice. so many missed wide open threes, though. Like, so yes, the de- the defense yeah. was bad, and like that that's probably going to be the focus of this discussion. But man, so many oh, wide yeah. open threes. Tatum had like a wide open corner three yeah. early that he missed. Al Horford over for seven, was it? All like, seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of them, just, all like, of, wide open, wide open. Yeah, critical part of the offense, particularly against the 76ers. Al Horford spacing, like each miss three diminishes the spacing because like, oh, he's not hitting them. Like maybe we can help off him a little bit. Devastating. Half court hoops, who is an awesome, like, uh, you know, hoops analyst with the X's and O's tweeted after the game. All the 76ers have to do to get an open shot is run a Harden and bead pick and roll on the left side. The Celtics are icing it, which is like to force um, them baseline or, or sideline in this case, which allows Harden to go left, which is his strong side, and Embiid to roll into open space. The Celtics haven't changed the coverage much all of this series. It's like, great. That I mean, that fucking sucked because like, yes, we, we saw it. Like maybe you didn't know in theory what was happening, but we saw Embiid getting the ball on the nail or on the free throw line all game and like just having... Um, you know, ultimate freedom in terms of like how to get his buckets and he was getting them all night. I want to say adjustment wise, like just don't, Oh, thank you. X three for the, again, the, the, the paid comment there. Amazing. Thank you so much for the comments <laughs> there. X three. We'll, uh, we'll get to your question in a second to that. Um, because it devastates me. Um, but you would like to think from an adjustment standpoint, like maybe don't force Harden to his strong hand on all of those picks and clear out that space around the free throw line for, for James Harden. Um, sorry, for, for Joel Embiid. Okay. So I've been pretty like Mr. Joe defender. It's on the players kind of thing. But, oh man, do I miss Brad Stevens right about now? Yeah, this was schematic. Yep. Like where where is the Gerald Green in the starting lineup move? Where is something? It is not working. So like the the adjustment was pretty obvious to me. It was put Grant or Rob in with Al and switch everything, switch everything, and then double turn turn them into ISO guys. You have to at least try Rob on the switch. Having Rob play and drop was so, 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 so frustrating. Um, Jalen Brown getting frustrated on court. Jalen Brown lost his def- his man like 12 times today. Yeah, yeah he was terrible. he was fucking awful. Let's he be honest. He was yeah. awful. And if I have, like, oh, sorry, but you go, you go. I can't, or, I can't talk. If, <laughs> if, I have to, if I have to fucking hear about Jalen Brown not getting a shot or being iced out again, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, yes. <laughs> he... he Go get the ball and and shoot. Like he, there was so many touches, so many times where he had the ball. He was nine for sixteen, three for six from three, twenty four points, six rebounds, two assists. You, you look at the box score and think he had a good game. He was a black hole hmm. all game. Every time the ball swung to him, he just stopped, attacked, and then he threw a hand grenade to someone, and it was and the possession was dead. It was ridiculous. What about hit a fucking free throw, man? Like, hit geez, free he got to the line and nice. Yeah, yeah, he he bricked like multiple consecutive free throws. Um, on top of yeah, just completely falling asleep on his defensive coverages, and I, I suppose just zooming out a little bit on the defense, just a total lack of defensive intensity, which I think people like people will often lean into if they're not like necessarily sure what's going on with the defense or just sit, like blanket coverage. It's a lack of defensive intensity. Try but, like, at this point, like, you know, it's deep into a playoff series, like the coverages, the strategies, they're not changing massively from game to game, right? Like we saw sort of minor changes, minor lineup changes. We saw a lot more Daniel house from Philly in this particular game. But as far as like the scheme for defending one another, they're not really changing massively from game to game this late in the, in the series and the Celtics, they just didn't like, they just didn't fulfill the, the strategy, like the game plan defensively in this game. And particularly Jalen Brown seemed to fall asleep on his coverages and his help and his it, just intensity and he's collapsing into the paint, which the Sixers did a really good job of on the other end of the court. And Daniel House was a huge part of that, particularly in transition. The Celtics had a 92-point 
offensive rating in transition in this game, which is <laughs> yeah, fucking terrible. Awesome. That's um, so good. And I, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to single. Yeah, that's fucking bad. That's I don't mean sick. to single out Jalen Brown, but like he just didn't, he just didn't bring it defensively in this game. And like he was probably the most standout culprit, but like really team wide, they just did not bring that level of defensive intensity. And you can only hope they're going to bring it in game six because it's going to be fucking necessary. Yeah. yeah. It's it's one of the only causes of optimism that I have is that we have seen Jalen Brown's defense on James Harden like be almost responsible for, you know, the two wins that we have. Because in those two games that we did when James Harden was like abysmal and now he has, you know, he goes in and out of his groove and now for two games straight, he appears to like be comfortable in it. So yeah, no, the, the defensive intensity just, yeah, like you said, from the get-go was just, was just appalling. And you know what, like not to pivot away from the conversation here, but if we were up three, one, I would almost guarantee we'd put the same performance in today. Yeah. And then yeah. we would come away thinking to ourselves, man, what's wrong with them? Like, why can't they put the foot down? Why can't they do this? Why can't they do that? And we would have that same, horrible niggling nervous energy that we had going back to Atlanta for game six. I would obviously much rather that be the scenario now than having a three, two deficit and rather than, you know, coming, having a three, two lead rather and, you know, coming off a loss. So I'm optimistic that they can get it back. Um, what this has done really though, has damaged any sort of optimism that you have for, you know, championship aspirations, because let's just say, you know, Tatum has, you know, a game sit, the kind of game six in the semis that he did last year against the Bucks. It's just such a and that gets us over it. Yeah. But then game one against Miami, like Eric Spolstra's schemes versus Missoula's schemes based on this evidence, it's going to yeah. be a bloodbath unless you shoot 50% or better from three. So I do like that you're, that you're, that you're still letting yourself go there. Good. I, I like that, I, Jackson. I, well, so, so, well, if I, I mean, don't, I have to go cry in the corner, and I'll, I probably I will eventually, but just not yet. Just not yet. It's good. <laughs> yeah, the season's going to end in tears. It's it's going to be either tears of joy, we finally won the championship, or tears of despair, we lost to Philadelphia of all teams. Oh yeah. my god, I can't believe I we're having this conversation. They are good. Like this is yeah. not losing. Mm. This is not the Bucks losing to. The, well, I guess the Heat are good now as well. I don't know mm. anymore. But like, this is not an eight seed beating the one seed in the in the first round. Like yeah. Philly was the third best team in this in the league, all all season long. They have the MVP. Who this? I am cannot believe we had to go through ten days of fucking Joel Embiid knee watch. He looks <laughs> the same as he always does. Yeah, someone's up there. What Someone's the hell up. is going on? Yeah. How is he getting better? How is he getting better? Doesn't make any sense. No brace. He's braceless. He's braceless. He braceless? braceless? As, as Kieran Ross has said in the chat, no brace, no something, no problems, no need brace, no problems. That shouldn't, it should not be the case. Should not be the case. It should be getting no. worse. It should be getting Degradation worse. Degradation over time. My whole thing was as this series goes along, we're going to get better and stronger. And the opposite appears to be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. the hell, dude? We, we do have to address a paid question. If you pay the money, we got to answer the question. It's not no question, yeah. I don't, I don't like the question, but I love, I love the support. Thank you for supporting uh, an up-and-coming pod that is, <laughs> what, six years old now. Um, uh, X3 is the, is the user asks, is it time to split up the Jays? Can I, can I go? Yeah, it's no, not. Ben, please. It's, not, it's, please. Not, it's, it's time to max Jalen Brown. He's going to be announced. All NBA <laughs> tomorrow, today, if you're listening to it, immediately max that man. As soon as we're sort of like able to legally offer him the max contract, do it. Who are we getting back in some sort of trade that's better than Jalen Brown? I know this has been disappointing. They're both very young <laughs> and our leader is 25 years old. There's, there's a lot better to come from these guys who are yet to, we've talked about it a lot, particularly recently because of all of the, the disappointment around the team, like 27 is like the prime ent prime entry age for NBA players. Neither of these guys have hit that age yet. You're not going to get a better player back. If you shop Jalen Brown around, like keep the Jays rebuild around them if you, if you need, but the, the core is, is good. And yes, this, this will be a disappointing end of the season. If it does end this way, which it may very well not, by the way, if they win game six, come back game seven at home, win. You know, we're not talking about this any any longer. It's not time to split up the Jays. It's time to enhance the the core group around the Jays. Yeah, dude. Like this has been this question. I feel like has been following us around for you know probably 
two, three seasons now. I think it was like, it was peak like middle of the Adoka reign when we were like below 500. I think that was when it was seriously gathering momentum. But then you saw them be statistically one of like the best teams ever for the back half of, of last season. And, you know, yes, that was a lot to do, you know, with the coaching staff, the schemes, the supporting cast they had. But, mate, our supporting cast this year is objectively better than the than the supporting cast that we had last yeah. year. As far as I can tell, the only thing that's really changed is, and I love Joe Mazzulla, but you got a guy who never coached a professional NBA team, got the call up two weeks before the season starts, like probably got woken up at 4 a.m. But on a phone call by Brad Stevens being like, some shit's gone down. You need to start, <laughs> you know, getting the, your schemes and rotations ready for next year. It's like, oh, sweet. I'll just ask, you know, Will Hardy. Oh, he's not there anymore. The, yeah. the coaching staff has been utterly decimated. So is it time to break up the Jays? Hell no. Jalen Brown might end up making that decision for us and walking away, and then we can just deal with it then. But if it's any decision if the power is in us us being theoretical celtics management the one that's going to dole out the 250 million dollars if he's eligible for it then absolutely not i don't think you do that i think you start looking at the other players that you start trading and the coaching staff that you retool before you even contemplate breaking those two up in my opinion that is thank you for the donation yeah <laughs> yes thank you so much <laughs> feel free to ask literally any question yeah. or, like especially with the donation sorry Jake, and I the rest you of you that haven't donated how dare you do not feel obliged do not feel obliged to donate to whatever the fuck is happening up on the screen right now i don't know where that money goes i don't yeah, see it no it goes to us it goes to us it goes okay. to us no. yeah, you're yeah. not throwing your money away guys keep coming exactly. <laughs> you can go to more, some, some more of these lovely lovely um pain pain set set Cleansing soothers, <laughs> cleansing soothers. Yeah, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, boy. I'm gonna pain so, cleanse myself too. <laughs> so, I don't want to get too deep into it because, like, if we do go down in game six or game seven, we're gonna have like months of yeah, exactly discussing this. But yeah. I would 100% go the route of using the assets of Marcus, Derek, and Malcolm to rejig the rest of the roster way before I would think about touching Jalen or Tatum's a, not even as a conversation starter for me. Mm. Um, uh, from what I've seen from Tatum, and I said this on the stream today, Tatum needs to kind of figure out who he is as a player and understand who he is as a player more. And he's been typecast as this Kobe Bryant pure scorer kind of guy. But when he's at his best is the second half of game four is when he's playing the best defense in the world. Like he's the one of the best wing defenders. He's grabbing 18 rebounds, offensive yeah. rebounding. He's playmaking. I, the comp that came to mind was Andre Karolinko, but like the superstar version. And like, that's not the best. Not the take the pats video. The chat's going off for the uh, for the chats here. Yeah, they want to start it. getting naked. I'll know. do anything. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best friend right there, Kieran. I'll see. I'll see you in Sydney, hopefully, in a couple of days. Um, Tatum needs to realize the all-around player. That's when he's at his best. It's not. The smooth, he's not the best shooter. He's not the most consistent scorer. He's not Devin Booker, who, can, who apparently can go off for 40 points back to back to back to back. He can be one of the best defenders in the NBA, guard one through five. He can play make as good as anyone on this team right now. So, like, if I was going to do anything with this roster, it would be leaning in. <laughs> it, it would be leaning in to Tatum as the guy and accentuating the pieces around him. Um, and we can get into like Derek White turning into a pumpkin again. Um, Marcus Smart not being a shooter. And a lot of these games ending in Marcus Smart shots and moments when maybe he's not the best offensive player in the league. And if the offense, if he's going to be out there for 35 minutes and be out there in crunch time and Tatum's going to be the guy with the ball in your hand, in his hands, he's going to have to make plays at times. Maybe that's where you go. But this is, this is doomsday stuff right now. Yeah. 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 I think I gotta, I gotta pull us out a little bit. Yeah. Pull us out, man. Please. Because, us. Yeah. An extraction. I'm a helicopter. Like extracting you guys from the battlefield because this is off season stuff. Uh, we've got a comment here from go I hate the fact that Joe is learning on the job. The roster is great. They're just playing too nonchalant. 
you know, it's not Joe's fault that Ime became just enraged with horniness in the offseason and got himself dude. fired. Like we can't, mm. we can't do anything about that. And like, I challenge you to, to tell me a better coaching candidate to, to take up that role at that point in the off season, like a few days before, before the regular season. I think Joe's done mm. an incredible job, all things considered. And of course, like he's going to have moments being out coached by Glenn Doc Rivers, like veteran coach literally took the Celtics to, the final a championship, like probably prior to the birth dates of many, many Celtics fans. Now that was a long time ago, 2008. So, mm. you know, I, Joe, he got to cut him some slack. He, he, maybe his experience, his tenure as a coach doesn't align with their expectations for where the team, you know, should end up. But like, yeah, he is learning on the job. Of course he's learning on the job. Like he's a first year coach who had almost no runway heading into his first season coaching a team that had championship expectations. Like what do you, what else do you want to say? Yeah. And it's, it's both things can be true that he is not cut out for the, the job that we have and that this is not really his, his fault. He has to yes. take responsibility obviously, but like, you know, if it, it, you, you can't, you can't do what you don't know. And I'm going to butcher this point that I'm trying to make here, but essentially <laughs> if, if you're the number four assistant, number three assistant to a Doki last year, then yeah, obviously, you know, you, you know, the guys, you know, the schemes, you know what you're going to try and do, but we're not playing the way that we played last year. We were defense first, no bullshit. Um, get into everyone's face. That was our identity. And we have divorced ourselves from that. And guess what? After 25 games, it looked like a great decision. You know, we were, we were by far and away the best team, you know, record wise. We were shooting the three ball at like an a historic pace, which I kind of which made me screw my face up a little bit because, you know, you're like, you know, a quarter of the way through the season. You're talking about NBA history. It's like, yeah, cool. But so, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's you know, what, what are you, you going to do? You're going to like, if, Brad, if you're Brad Stevens, right, and you've got this amazing record and this coach is still the interim do you think to yourself, I'm going to leave this guy as the interim. I'm going to make himself prove his credentials throughout the rest of the regular season and through the playoffs. Okay. All the hindsight warriors are saying, obviously you should have done that. Or when this guy has got us to 20 and five and we're playing some of the best basketball in the history of the NBA. Do you not think to yourself, you know what? Let's just make him the permanent coach. He can stop thinking about like, where's my next job going to be or anything like that. And he can concentrate on getting the best out of his team. That is an easy business decision. As far as I'm concerned, it hasn't worked out. Or, <laughs> let, let, me, let me, let me pull that back. It's yeah, not it looking like it's going to work out. We're yeah. still alive in this series. We're still alive in this series, but yes, <laughs> technically we are, but I, I just, it, you know, the, the, the lack of experience, the lack of schemes, the lack of, you know, sophisticated rotations compared to the likes of Doc Rivers, Eric Spolstra, et cetera, et cetera. Um, don't put it, Doc Rivers in the same sentence as Eric I, I, I don't want to, but based on, based on what we're seeing, it's, it's, it, it's, uh-huh. it's happening. So yeah, I think we're just outmatched from a coaching um, standpoint here. And it sucks because I like Jem as well. I like how weird he is. I like, he's got that like yeah. crazy bug I'd sort of look, I would look nothing more than to see him with that same meerkat face holding up the NBA championship, looking down the thing. It would be, it'd be fantastic. But my, my, my optimism in that happening is about probably less than 5% at the moment. So, so I, I, I will say like the, the rightful criticism, and it seems most people agree with this, the, the criticism is on the players, right? This series and for some parts during the, the Hawk series for not executing, for not like playing the way that they have shown us that they can play. And so I guess credit Ime Adoka there and like his, his relationship with the players was such that like he could get more out of them. So it's not necessarily uh, down to the coach as far as like scheme, and their approach to the game of basketball. But if it is going to be about the players, and there, if there was one guy who could get the players and get the best out of those players, it was, might have been Ime Adoka. So maybe that's where you divide the two. Well, mm. I think what they did this year was, okay, the defense was incredible last year. What led, what undid the Celtics in the finals was the offense. And what undid the Celtics in the Heat series and the Bucks series was the offense. It was the turnovers. It was the stagnation. So they put a massive, massive emphasis on fixing the offense going into the next season because they were like, we'll flip the switch with defense. We got the personnel still. These guys have been playing top five level defense for half a decade now. 
that part will kind of take care of itself. And they were kind of right. Despite the Celtics defense not being that good, and this was like league-wide defense wasn't as good this year, but the Celtics had the second best defense in the NBA this season, but no one, no one, everybody knows it wasn't on the same level as it was last year. And now we're here. I, the ceiling of this team is leaning into the defense. Mm-hmm. And mm. part of that is Rob, but Rob wasn't even healthy for the playoffs last year. And I wouldn't even say Al's been that much of an issue. Like he was awesome on Embiid in game four. Al came out today and was playing great defense. They switched everything last season. They're playing way more drop this year. And they went away from that defensive identity that Jackson's talking about, which has kind of been this team's calling card since Tatum came into the league. Really, that's been where they've held it, held it down. And for some reason, what they've never been able to unlock has been the defensive intensity plus the pace. Like, mm. why is this team not yes. the fastest team in the league? Why is this team mm. not basically two number two after the Kings? Why are they not just running the ball down everyone's throat? They have the most, like, the youth, the athleticism, the length. It makes no sense that they are not just going and going and going and going. Yeah. Because that, like, they haven't wall. had their backs up against the wall until yeah. now. Until now. <laughs> until now. Until now. Yeah. So and here it great comes. Segue. Jackson, how can the Celtics win game six? What's the adjustment? What's the strategy? What's the approach? How can they bring joy back into our lives? All right. Well, first of all, you gotta you've you've got to like make just life completely and utterly miserable and livable for James Harden and Joel Embiid. Okay. Mm-hmm. You gotta do that. If Tyrese Maxey is going to score 40 and is going to like hit backbreaker three after backbreaker three and, and PJ Tucker is going to get his shots and things like that, unfortunately, that's just the kind of thing you have to live with. Because I guarantee you most other coaches, when they're playing the Celtics, it's it's nullify Tatum, nullify Brown, we'll live with whoever else can, can, can get it done on us. So there has to be a real emphasis and a real dogged single-mindedness we are not going to let tatum we're not going to let james harden nor joel Embiid get anything easy and i I don't know what that if that means you know doubling him i don't know if that means picking the ball up higher i i whatever it is like i don't have the intellect to 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 explain like precisely what needs to happen but there needs to be a way more of of an intensive an intense defensive effort on those two um they just got to look like they give a shit. And I know like just looking like you give a shit and, you know, putting the ball in the hoop are two different things, but it, it, I just, we've seen too many times in this playoffs. And by too many times I can count twice game five against the Hawks and game five now where it just looked like they were straight up fucking around and didn't really know what they were doing. Game one, I suppose you could say that, but again, I, I have a hard time, you know, you know, we, we lost to a, a long, long distance James Harden three-pointer when he had 45. To be fair, Trey Young did that in game five as well. But it's, it's you've just got to do what you can to take, to nullify their star players. And you've just got to match the intensity and you've got to play faster. That would yeah. be my beginner's guide to beating the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, absolutely. Jackson makes a lot of awesome points. And before we get to the rest of how the Celtics are going to beat the Sixers in game six, we've got a quick message from our sponsor. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel has been perfect for betting against the Celtics in this series. Great promotions every day, safe and secure app, get paid in this instantly. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sport. Visit fanduel.com slash Boston and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's fanduel.com slash Boston. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus in select states, first online real money wager, to only $10 deposit required. Refund issued on non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Trick and supply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbet. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-800-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. Connecticut, 1-800-789. 9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, gamblinghelp.org or call 800-327-5050. 
27 support, Massachusetts, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 18778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Now, if you think Jake is awesome at reading our ad copy, which he is, because it is, it's it's quite a lot. As much as we love FanDuel, we love getting a, a punt on before every game, Jake is even better at telling us why the Celtics are going to win game six in Philly. Jake, what do you got? We have to switch everything. We have to. I sw- okay, that's the one thing we have to do. The second thing I think I'd it might be time. I don't know if Joe's going to go here or even consider a big change like this. But you got I would I would put Brogdon in the starting lineup and and play him like 35 to 40 minutes wow. because I I know he hasn't been perfect. And I know we talked about this defensive identity that we don't really have. It's too late. It's too late to change this year. We have to lean all the way in to the offense and bomb and be aggressive. Like we have to try and rain terror down upon these people. And X3 again, another donation, absolute legend. Why don't we play X3? (laughs) Why don't we play with pace? It is confounding. And if there's one adjustment I would make for the next, for the next game, it's play with pace. You need to try and run Harden and Embiid off the court. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Tatum. In particular, I think Jalen's pretty keen to to get up and down. But Jason, man, for whatever, like he he got there after the first quarter. He got there in the second half of game four. But you have to come out from the jump and get up and down. Mm-hmm. You have to. But yeah, I think I think you have to lean into the offense. The Celtics were oh, sorry. The Celtics, the the Sixers did a great job as we talked about of packing the paint. Uh, and Daniel House was a huge addition to like just having personnel on the court always who could pack the paint. That did not bother Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, like once he decided to do his thing, was getting to the rim at will, drawing fouls frequently, like getting good looks. He, he was just a problem for Philly at the rim. So like, yeah, Jason Tatum just needs to be that version of himself from the tip because the the sooner that you do that, the sooner the Philly defense is going to adjust. Then you've got those kickout options. Maybe Philly cover the, the first kickout pass to Horford, then Horford can swing it. Suddenly, like our offense is, is um, you know, zinging again in that sense. So uh, Tatum just needs to be Jason Tatum. Like it's such a cliche, like from the tip. What do you think, Jackson? <laughs> Yeah. Um, remember game one, how they had no Embiid and we had like 80 points in the paint or something like egregious and we still lost. Yes. Um, oh yeah, man. <laughs> it's, um, I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, my, my, the, my analysis is sort of like petering out. I'm, I'm more of a vibes person <laughs> at this stage because I've, I've, I've got very little left and to go with. And the vibes are bad. Yeah, the that's vibes very, are bad. That's very currently. acceptable. Yeah. Um, look, I, I too many, way too many people are going on about Game Six, Milwaukee last year. Different team, different yeah. times, different opponent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The one thing that I refuse to write, I refuse to write the obituary on this team until it is officially over. When it is officially over, we can we can probably go into it. But I've just seen this team just pull it out when it looked hopeless, like too many times. I've seen it. Yes, it didn't. Yes, they didn't pull it out in the finals last year. Yes, they were that far away from one of the biggest, most embarrassing, horrible chokes <laughs> of all time in the East Conference Finals. Again, all last year. All I know is that this team, when they play, and we saw it as as as, as recently as what five days ago, Game Three. Like we're more than capable of handling this team if we execute on the offensive ends, um, the defensive adjustments playing with pace, et cetera, all these things will help. But you're right. It's Tatum. If, if Tatum is making shots and Tatum's getting the paint and Tatum's getting physical and Tatum is trying to like, you know, prove himself that he is the equal uh, of Joel Embiid, even if he is just a tier below or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're still in that superstar realm of like top five, six guys in the NBA. That should be more than enough to like win 
a crunch game such as this. So I hope he does it. I really hope he does it. But we are going to need, you know, something other than a duck egg from Al Horford and Derek White to, you know, not suck I, I think, amongst I think others D- as well. I think D. White might be done for this series. Like, wow. like is, it, is it that bad? I, I, I think for this, for this series yeah. in particular, I think if we were able to get to the next round, then he can come back into the into the mix. But for now, he dude, he he looks like PJ Tucker on offense. Yeah. He's just wandering mm-hmm. around. Like, which way am I going? He's just wandering around. That's what he said. He's <laughs> <laughs> which way am I going? <laughs> Where like what is he doing, dude? This was the mistress. This was huh. the guy. What's the status of that relationship? Man, I've canceled all. I'm like giving up my Marriott membership. Like it's you're, you're wow. back to monogamous, full full commitment to the <laughs> yeah yeah I'm yeah I'm <laughs> on the day he's crowned all defensive second team. <laughs> it's the moment <laughs> yeah. I walk out the door. Well, when's the last time Derek White had a fucking big play? Even Very on true. defense, yeah. like I, yep. like the offense can come and go, but where's the defensive playmaking? That's what's so amazing about Derek White taking charges, making blocks, deflections. Get out and getting out and running off of that stuff. It's been nothing. It's been nothing. And that's what makes Derek White special. So like a, a huge part of how the team can succeed in the next two games is like, first of all, those, like, I hesitate to call them role players, but like at least in the playoffs, they kind of are Derek White, who was the third best player on the team all regular season. Now a role player in the playoffs. We need some version of Derek White. We need good Malcolm Brogdon who did all right when defending James Harden in in this game, in game five, he had some he decent moments. Off. Yeah, but compared to the rest of the series uh, prior, he, he actually did a right on James Harden in this particular game. But we certainly need um, Derek White to be aggressive. Like, his getting to the paint that he has exhibited all season where these, like, crazy hop steps, like, you know, he, his finishing moves have been incredible. We've seen none of that. On top of that, I mentioned it earlier, the uh, James Harden, Joel Embiid pick and roll where we're forcing Harden to the left side, you know, which equates to Embiid open in the middle, right at the free throw line. Like just force, force James Harden, right? Force him to his weak hand, which also messes up their spacing because you're funneling him right to where Embiid's trying to get the ball. Like make that adjustment, if nothing else. And I think, I think they will. If we're all talking about that right now, that absolutely must be a point of emphasis in the, in the locker room discussion. Anything else that you guys could think of that needs to be, needs to be changed. I think maybe helping off uh, Tucker, they need to just do that more ruthlessly, like at least early help off Tucker. If he starts making his shots, sure. Adjust again, but particularly with Rob out there and potentially going double big with Horford and Rob, help off Tucker until he becomes a problem and then adjust accordingly. But Rob has kind of been nothing in this series as well, because we haven't, you know, he hasn't been able to be that, that Roma, that blocker that we've seen him have success with in, in, in the double big lineups in the past. Try and make that happen. If, if Tucker, you know, forces you out of that fine, but I think you should at least try that early in the game. What do you guys think? I think, look, maybe you try and recapture the magic. Maybe yes. you ben- instead of benching Derek for Malcolm, you bench Derek for Rob, and you tr- and you try and see if you can find it because they're gonna have tuck. Because what's been the issue with Rob has been they've been playing. If Rob's out there, they're they're not they're not playing Tucker, and so they're not giving Rob a place to hide. They're like playing Niang or or whatever. And so if you start the game with Rob, then there will be someone to hide on with with PJ. And you can either put Al on PJ or Rob on PJ. You switch the pick and roll. You, I'm going to be very concerned if the starting lineup looks... I'm going to be very concerned, obviously, anyway. Very concerned. <laughs> Standy Man Standy is Man's killing just, it in the chat right got now. He's just riffing, making his own song out here. <laughs> is, that, is that a Britney Spears? I, am, I, am I reading that wrong? That sounds like Britney so. Spears to me. I might be aging myself there. Hit Sorry. me Boston two more, two more times. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, don't rule it out. Look, as, you know, I don't know, if, are we going to get to rituals soon? But yeah, like, yes. empty the clip. Empty the clip try and rain terror upon these guys 53 threes just you've been if that's where you're gonna go down with the ship baby go down with the ship the titanic guy playing the violin gentlemen it's been a pleasure playing with you (laughs) that's the (laughs) ship sings uh all right 
I think hi. I just looking at my notes here. Um, another Jalen on Harden masterclass is necessary. Like staying out of foul trouble early, keeping those hands high and back, and just like what we saw in game two, and then a high pickup points, which just feeds into the defensive intensity. Like you need to make these, you need to suffocate these guys as soon as the ball is in play, right? Like whether it's off makes or misses, we need these full court pickups. We need to use our our length, our athleticism, our relative youth. We need to use that to suffocate the Sixers for the remaining two games because there will be two games of this series. Um, full throttle Tatum, we talked about. Um, I think that's everything. I think I've gone through all my notes of how we could adjust in, in game six. Really, it just comes down to like, we know we know the formula. Just like execute it better, play harder. Orange Anything ball, go in for us, please. Yeah, <laughs> a uh, couple of post game quotes here. So this is from Taylor Snow, uh, Marcus Smart's mentality down three two. Quote: If you're not willing to get dirty, if you're not willing to bleed, if you're not willing to break something, willing willing to tear something going hard, then you shouldn't be on the court because that's what the playoffs are about. End quote. And then uh, Brian Robb. Jason Tatum lays out his game six prep timeline. Quote, we have a flight tomorrow. We're going to watch film when we get there. Get some rest. Shoot around Thursday. Talk to you guys again. Say the same shit again. And then get ready for the game on Thursday. Are you guys gleaning anything from those quotes? Is there anything from those two quotes that make you feel better or worse about where we're headed? Nah, for, for me, the more boring, the more nonchalant, the more uncontroversial, the better, because that's that's just how they talk for most of the year, right? So you could see that and you could read it one way. It's like, ah, oh, you know, that's, you know, he's just going through the motions. He doesn't care. He wants to get a kick. There's all that crap. But if you start coming out, you start being emotional. You start saying, damn it, I want to win and I want to win hard and everything like that. And some people will, will, will just, We'll just lap that right up. But for me, that's just like, shit, this is getting to me. I need to say something to inspire myself or I need to take say something to take the pressure off of me. These guys have been here, as I said earlier, I've been here many, many times. They've done it before. I think the less variance in their comments and the more even keeled their demeanor, the better, at least for me. If it goes wrong on, on, on Friday, Thursday, then that's fine. We can pick that apart further. But for me, you got to keep it as boring as possible and keep and keep it going because that's how it's been all year. Now, Jake, we I'm going to get your comments on Derek White's all defense team make because you have been, you know, the Derek White's been the mistress all year for you. And then we can then we can wrap up on our um, post game and and pre game like anti jinx routines. But just. I know it's tough right now because Derek White has been like pretty gash in this series, but like, just talk to me about the the vindication from your standpoint of Derek White making an all defensive team. He was the, he was the one, he was the perfect, <laughs> the perfect role like player. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> he was the chosen one. Yes. <laughs> do, do not doubt me. <laughs> Oh man, he was perfect. He led second in the league in blocks for guards. He deserved it. Deserved first team over Alex Caruso, probably mm-hmm. or Drew Holiday. Um, love to see it for Derek. Absolutely well deserved. And just sucks the way that they release these awards because very often they come with like people just being stomped out of the playoffs, like. Mm. It was supposed to be MB getting the MVP and getting being down three one today. Mm-hmm. Alas, he was Alas. great. I th- I think when we do the like the end of season recap, like Derek White will feature a lot more from a more positive standpoint. But given you know, <laughs> what we we haven't seen from him in this series, like you know where were you when we needed you? Derek, like <laughs> that's that's tough. Um, let's end on this, guys. Jackson, I'll start with you. What's your post brutal loss routine? Like a game like today, I know you you're probably working because it's like the middle of the day Aussie time. Say say the game happens when you're at home on a weekend or whatever. Like what what's your post brutal loss routine? How how are you like dusting yourself off psychologically from a game like today? Well, well, I was at work and I, I'd say as all losses, I like to take it out on the customers. 
Someone asks me for something and I just tell them, absolutely not. Fuck off. Leave me alone. Uh, no. So first of all, I grab my, 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 my Celtics little teddy bear and I, and I cuddle it and I have a little cry for a few hours. Um, <laughs> no, nah, like I don't really have much of a routine, a, a, a brutal loss. Like honestly, this was a brutal loss. Sure. But I accepted it was a loss like halfway through the third quarter. Uh, whereas game three, Healthy. When it goes down the way that it does, that 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 crushes me. So, like when I'm crushed, when I'm properly crushed, I just go zero dark thirty. I go no uh, social media, no nothing. <laughs> my my YouTube feed is I don't even look at it. You know what I mean? I listen to some music, I listen to some history podcasts, and after about two hours, and I start to calm down, I calm down a little bit. I then go online and I then read all the hot takes. And if the hottest of hot takes about how crap the teams are, the team is, if that annoys me and I feel like defending it, then I, I know that I'm back. When I read a hot take and it's like, this team sucks straight everyone. And I'm like, eh, you know, maybe we should. Then I know I'm still not good enough and I go dark again. So it's just, it's it, the reason I get so upset with losses is it deprives me of time browsing the internet, reading about how good my team is and how much other teams suck. And when that gets yeah. taken away from me, it's bad. Yeah, so that's my answer. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. All you want is the all the notifications to come through of all the podcasts being like Celtics big win, Tatum stamps his spot in the league, and instead what we get is Bill yeah. Simmons Celtics hit rock bottom. And I yeah. went back, I went back to look that at happened. what what Bill Simmons posted after game five of the Milwaukee series because I thought it was important to just <laughs> to go back. And so today's was a Celtics rock bottom and Bede's big statement. You go back literally like 12 months to the day, pretty much. Philly implodes Apex Giannis versus Apex LeBron and the worst Celtics losses ever. So look, we felt pretty bad around this time last year. Oh, I got us. Way I worse. Recall, I think it was maybe worse. Like I'm with you, Jackson. Like the 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 getting blown out part made it a lot easier. Um, my routine is just like jump in the ocean, mm. like <laughs> usually. And there's a cat, cat, bingo. First of the four. <laughs> the, cat, the cat's That's, good luck. It means we're we're winning the, winning it all. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> And now that I've moved somewhere cold, that feels like it has a bigger impact, either like mm. surf or jump in the ocean if there's no surf. And it has like a pretty, pretty big impact. Um, but I'm also kind of like a masochist because I'll like just, li I'll listen to the Zach Lowe podcast after the Southern's collapse. I'll listen to, I'll still do all the stuff that I usually do and I'll just let it wash over me and get in. It hurts, but I can't help it, but do it to myself. I'm just going to answer this, this paid question yeah. again. Thank you. X3. So, so generous. Um, uh, what do you guys think the reason is for Jason's first quarter slow starts? I think a huge part of that is the team's difficulty in getting the ball to Jason Tatum, um, which comes down to the defense of the opposition. That's, that's been an issue all playoffs. And for the, for the better part of the regular season, you know, obviously front page of the scattering report is like deny, deny, deny Jason Tatum. And beyond Marcus Smart, who has trouble in this realm as well, you know, we've got a lot of guys who struggle to get the ball to a guy who is being completely denied by by the opposition. Um, thank you, John Zanis Pies, as well. <laughs> I'll have to, to, take, you, have to take your word, have to take your word for it. I'm not sure I buy it. Yeah. I think it's a mentality thing as well. You just yes. have to come. And, it's, it's, it, and again, it's not just the scoring. He has so many ways to impact the game, and he can do it with force. He has to come out with force. Like even to start the game, I thought he play made well. He found guys on kickouts. They missed it, and they missed a lot of shots. Um, now, look if you if you're listening to the audio pod and you're like, "Hey, we were on a, a certain subject matter, and we keep deviating." Like, come onto the YouTube, pay a little money, like X3 is doing here. You can ask your questions. We'll completely deviate <laughs> from our run sheet and answer your question immediately. So great, Jake uh, will get naked. Excuse. That's fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. Great reason to to come onto our YouTube uh, first of the floor and subscribe. My post brutal loss routine uh, is just to go for a long walk. I like to listen to like comedy podcasts to basically like completely take myself out of like, I'm a person who enjoys basketball, let alone the Celtics. So it's like, go to the gym, work out, music, comedy, video games, as long as it's not video NBA 2K, 
yeah. FIFA is yeah. huge in these times. <laughs> just like remember who you were before you were completely obsessed and like broken down by the Celtics. I think is, the, is-, is the routine there. Seal and LX stone with the big bucks, huge. Not even a question. No, no, God. I think that just means take off clothes, guys. I'm gonna say that's a it's like, that's... I think that, that goes straight back to Seal and S anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Max very, very clever. I'm gonna need another twenty before the pants come off. <laughs> it is, a, it is a bigger question, and I'm not. It's unanswerable. It's like, how do we approach fandom in a way that's not so painful while also reaping the joy? And I, the answer is probably you can't like you can't have the joy without the pain the misery without the glory so i'm in the hot tub bubs this is- <laughs> 50 we bucks fun- we don't, we 50 don't have all- funding <laughs> yeah keep, we'll do a donating. season from a, a hot tub 50 bucks yeah if you keep donating we'll eventually pod from a hot tub i'll uh, in fact i'll do everything in my life digitally yeah. from a hot tub if you <laughs> Um, all, all right, right predictions. Game yeah, six. predictions. Well, first of all, quickly before we get to actual predictions, quick round the room pre game six anti jinx routine. And if you want to, if you want to roll this into your predictions, that's fine. Sure. But yes, only fans. Thank you, CLNS Celtics. We will start. A, is that Armit? It has to be. Is that Armit? Or is it Gelsa Armit? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Anti-jinx routine, like between now and when the game starts and, and feel free to roll this into your predictions. Like, is it a lucky pair of Celtics undies? Are you like, are you barring someone from your life? Who's like a Sixers fan? Like, what are you, what are you doing to ensure a Celtics win in game six? So if I was in America, I would go straight to FanDuel and I would put probably <laughs> hey. like however much money I could, I could conceivably like not give a shit about losing. And I would bet it against the Celtics. I am utterly convinced if I bet on the Celtics, they lose. Sorry, yeah, if, I'm utterly, if I bet f- with the Celtics, they'll lose. If I bet against them, they'll win. Now, that might not be scientifically possible or, or a thing at all, but I have enough anecdotal evidence that I haven't kept records of to know that it is a good measure to take. So I will be betting probably an obscene amount of money on, on Friday. And if it wins, then I'll feel like I bought the win and I did my part. And if it loses, well, I can go out and buy extra, extra fine booze to, to, to get at, at blackout drunk that night. So uh, <laughs> I, th- I think it's going to work and I think we're going to win game six. I, I am recreating pretty much the exact game six environment as I did last year. So I, t- I typically watch a lot of games with my dad and now that I've moved to another state, have not been doing that, but I'm flying back to Sydney, not in, not for That's game six. Way. It just happens to, happens to be a coincidence. We're going to be watching it together. And we happen to have one of my best friends who watched game six with us last year. All and right. my dad hates watching games with pretty anyone besides me. And he like, cause they speak basically, basically they speak. And that's a, a, a no, a no go when my dad's watching games that outside of me, but Johnny apparently like made it through the, the dad like parameters for watching a game. And we won <laughs> huge. Cause I have another friend, Ben who watched a Pats game with us. And but dad was like, I'm never watching a game with him ever again. And I'm like, yeah, I thought that might, I thought that might not, happen. Not me for the record. Yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. Old Ben. And, and predictions, Jake predictions for game six. I don't feel good, Ben. Can't lie. Uh, don't feel good. I think it, I think it's got to be the Celts, right? Like back against the wall, Milwaukee last year, Game Six, Tatum. Like this is unfortunately, it takes these circumstances for them to be the Celts that we know and love post November. So you know the recipe is there. It's just go out and and cook it up. What do you think, Jackson? Yeah. Yeah, if we're going to lose, we're going to lose in game seven on our home court, and it's going to be way, way worse than losing <laughs> We'll talk about that against, against, the fin- now. Yeah, against game six, which is why not- we're going to win oh. game six, and we can cross <laughs> that death bridge when we That's come to it. That's a good question. It. Would you rather lose game six, win game six, lose game seven, or lose game six? No, lose game six. I was thinking about this today. I would never want to be swept in the first round uh, as opposed to losing in game six of the finals. But there's definitely a line somewhere. It was a game seven of the finals. There's definitely a line somewhere though, where the experience and the reps and the journey that you'll take is not going to be worth the crushing defeat that you get at the end of it. So in that situation, no, just, just lose game six and get it over with. But 
I like the question because there's definitely a line where it's like, yeah, is, I could suffer, I could get the highs and the lows and ultimately be sad or I just be sad now and move on with my life. No, I think about I'm, it a lot, actually. I'm a, I'm a masochist. <laughs> Give me the pain. Get my hopes back up. It's a much better answer. One more time and then crush me. (laughs) Crush us in front of our fans and boo us off the court one more time. Hurt me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hurt me, baby. Great, great sentiment to wrap up on. I promised you guys we'd go 30 minutes. We've gone twice that typical first of the floor fashion. That is going to do it for this one. If you've lasted this long, listener, firstly, good on you for sticking out uh, after this uh, you know, brutal loss. But secondly, you're clearly enough of a fan to leave us a review, a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, a like on YouTube, share it with your mates. The algorithm is tough. So please support the show by engaging in whatever way you can share, subscribe, comment, review, like it all helps. We'll be back after the next game, whatever happens, win loss, we will be there. Please win Celtics, please. God for me personally, (laughs) emotionally, that would be great. Jackson, Jake, love your work guys until next time. Go Celtics.